Newton's laws uh, come up a lot in a physics course, uh, but first I wanted to talk about equilibrium. I mentioned it a little bit earlier. I just wanted to make sure we sort of firm it up, um, what I mean by equilibrium. Just got to find my chalk. Uh, equilibrium is when the resultant force is zero. Whoops, my R looked like a V there. So resultant force equals zero. In other words, the net force equals zero. That's the key thing here. Okay, so if you're in equilibrium, it means that the forces acting on you are canceling each other out. So you still might have forces. They're just evening each other out and canceling each other. And that's when you're in equilibrium. But I want to point out one thing really important. You can still be moving. Like a lot of students think as soon as you have a net force of zero, it means that you're stopped. But you can still be moving. I mean, right now, as I stand still, right now my net force is zero because I have a downwards gravitational force and an upwards normal force. So I'm not moving and my net force is zero, so I'm in equilibrium. Often it's called translational equilibrium, just to be a little bit, because uh, you could also be in rotational equilibrium. But here we'll just talk about translational equilibrium, meaning the net, forces, uh, net force sorry, is zero. So they all cancel each other out. But you can have an example when you are moving. So like, uh, what if you're in a plane? So this is my little plane here. Uh, let's see here, a little crappy propeller plane. There's my wings and there's my little plane here. There's my tail. So here's my little uh, plane. That's not a very nice plane, but uh, this is supposed to be a propeller plane. Um, when you're flying through the air, you have a forward force, which is called thrust. You have a backwards force, which is um, air resistance in this case. You have a downwards force of gravity, and you have an upwards force of lift. And so when you're flying, you could be in equilibrium, meaning you're still moving. Your net uh, sort of speed can still be moving, but in this case right here, we still have F net equals zero. But here we have a V which is not equal to zero. See that? So here we are actually moving with some speed. We're actually flying through the air happily so, uh, but our net force can be zero. And of course, by making one of the forces larger or smaller, we can adjust uh, how we fly. That's one of the main things behind airplanes. Of course, it's a bit more complicated because there's surfaces in the, um, like on the ends of the wings called ailerons that move up and down. But the main idea is just that the net force can be zero and you can still be moving. So I just wanted to point that out. Now, Newton's first law. Um, it's usually quite long in writing it, but I'm going to give you the sort of the short version of it and just that object, uh, let's see here, object at rest stays at rest. That's the main thing here. And the same thing with an object in motion. Okay, so an object in motion also wants to stay in motion. So this means if I'm still, I'm going to want to keep being still, so to speak, unless something sort of kicks me and moves me. Same thing if, um, let's say you're in outer space and you're in a spaceship and flying in a straight line, you're going to want to keep going in a straight line unless something else causes you to move. So that's why I'm going to say, unless acted on by an external Here's the key part here, unbalanced force. I'm just going to change my little A here because it was ugly looking. Oops, I didn't really make it better. So unless you're acted on by an external unbalanced force. My A's aren't very nice today. So the key thing here is that F net, whoops, is not zero this unbalanced force. So what this means is that you're going to want to go in a straight line 
unless something comes and is an unbalanced force, right, which means it's the net force is not zero. It's not a situation like this. It could be a situation where like, I don't know, um, well, let's do an example. Let's say you're, you're a cyclist. I live in Denmark and everybody here seems to be on a bike all the time. So let's say I have a cyclist. So my cyclist, uh, let's say I'm biking along and there's a little piece of wall here. So maybe this is my bike here. I gotta try to draw a bike nicely. Let's see, uh, bikes go like this sort of. So then here's me on my bike. I guess there's a seat here and there's my legs and I'm biking along and I'm moving this way. Okay, so there's my speed here. I'm moving that way and there's this wall here. Well, what happens of course is that this is before. Now after, of course, is not gonna be very fun. Uh, afterwards, I just have a mess, a jumble of bike here and I just go flying. Okay, so I can actually go flying. And the reason why I go that way is because of Newton's first law. It's because I am moving, my bike stops suddenly, but I want to keep moving. See, I tend to stay in motion. So as a result, I go flying and that's maybe why I get hurt. Um, another example is seat belts. That's actually why you want to wear your seat belt because if you don't wear a seat belt, you're in your car, your car runs into a wall, but you and the car are separate objects if you're not strapped in to your car, which means this, as you drive, if the car stops, it's gonna be like being on a bike here. The car is gonna stop suddenly, but you, if you're a free object, not strapped in, you're going to keep flying. That's why you can get hurt by putting your face in, I don't know, the steering column, or some people have even been thrown completely out of a car. And that's because of Newton's first law. It also um, comes into effect with circular things. So for example, what if um, I have some sort of uh, rope on the end of a string, uh, sorry, a weight on the end of a string, and I would you know, swing that above my head like this. As I'm swinging it, if we looked at a top view of that, you know, so let's say I'm swinging it around. As I swing it around, you know, it's going around like this, right? This is sort of the direction. But the question is, what if I let go of the rope? Which way will it keep going? That's actually a common question I like to ask students uh, just to see because uh, a lot of people think it's going to keep moving in a circle, but it doesn't. I mean, that's the whole reason why, um, you know, one of these sort of slingshots, you know, if you actually move something around and then you threw it, it goes in a straight line. The only reason it wasn't going in a straight line is because there was a string there or something else there that was unbalanced that was causing it to go around in a circle. So when that force stops, let's say I cut the string or let it go, it tends to go in a straight line. Okay, so if I let it go, it would actually, oh, that was a horrible sound. It would actually keep going in a straight line. Um, so that's really important. So I think uh, Newton's first law is especially important in our own everyday lives because uh, we experience these things a lot. I mean, uh, if I am at rest, my body doesn't tend to want to move unless you know, something pushes it. It's actually related to inertia, but that's not something uh, that we need to talk about in physics SL. But it turns out inertia has to do with this. It has to do with you know, why it may be harder to push a train you know, if a train is stopped and you want to push that, it may be harder to push that train and get it going um, than maybe, you know, my calculator, if I try to push that, that's a lot easier to push it and get it going. But Newton's first law is still very important. Things at rest tend to stay at rest. Things that are moving tend to stay moving unless there is an external unbalanced force. In the case of my cyclist, the external unbalanced force was basically the force of this wall on the bicycle, right? So that, in that case, well, the bicycle hitting the wall is the, so I, of course, go flying. So hopefully that's uh, helpful. And uh, we're gonna talk in the next video about uh, Newton's second and third laws.